Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jalal Jihazi. Welcome to Morocco English Radio. The investment scope in Morocco has changed during the last 20 years. The country is currently ranked in the top three most attractive destinations of international direct investments. To talk about the attractiveness of Morocco and the Moroccan success story in this field, we are honored to host Mr. Simo Al Andalusi, the CEO of Lotus Capital. Mr. Andalusi, welcome to Morocco English Radio. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Andalusi, before we kick off our discussion today, could you please introduce yourself to our dear listeners? Sure. Uh, in a nutshell, um, left Morocco at the age of 21. Um, I basically, was, I was a comedian. I wanted to be an actor <laughs> before I went to uh, to Canada, then on to the U.S., uh, and then I started my entrepreneurship journey. Um, so it's been it's 17, I'm 38 today, 17, 18 years in business. I uh, started with sales, public speaking, um, started in network marketing. It's an industry for seven years, then moved into real estate where I did brokerage, sales, investments, raising capital, and then finally real estate development where we could we buy, build, and sell uh, in Canada and also in New York where I spent a lot of years over there then moved into some other ventures, FinTech. I want to keep it very you know, short and sweet. Um, FinTech, real estate, and now I'm in the financial uh, sector, well, finance as a, as a whole. So multi, uh, multi-services type of, type of company. So that's what we are. Very good. So when did you move to Morocco? 2016. 2016. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, and when you moved to Morocco, what? What did you do? What was actually the idea behind uh, bringing that experience from from international market like U.S. and Canada and coming to Morocco? Honestly, you want the you want the I want the truth. You, you want the truth? That's what. The, okay, the, great. No, I, I, want, I want the truth. <laughs> only the truth. I'm nothing about the truth. Okay, amen. <laughs> Please help me God. Um, I came back for family, right? Really, it, it was it was a uh, it was a uh, out of the blue type of uh, type of family driven. Yeah, yeah it, it it was a move. It was an emotional move, really. So when I came back, I was kind of like all over the place. I didn't know where I belong. I come back, I stay. I didn't know really what to do. So I could uh, for the first months, I didn't know, I didn't know where where to where to put my head on my foot. So I kept uh, working remotely with my businesses. I kept my businesses uh, international, and then slowly started looking into some local small ventures, just to like you know dip my toe in the water and fill it out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how I started. And then started looking into other businesses, failed some, to be honest with you, lost some money, got shocked. <laughs> Learned. Learned a lot. Yep. Learned yep. a lot. Yep. So, but it was, it, 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 for me, there's no failure. Yep. Everything is cool. Yep. I keep learning every day. Yep. And today I could, I could, I could tell you that it was a great move where I came back to my natural or my, uh, natural environment, or I'm Moroccan, right? I'm Canadian Moroccan. I spent 10 years in Canada and a year and a half in New York in the U.S. But I feel I'm international. I travel a lot. I do business internationally, but I live where I am where I'm, where I'm supposed to be. That's what I could tell you. I think it's a, uh, you know, in, in Good Morning Morocco, we, we usually get guests from uh, Moroccans and as well foreigners. And and we're always honored and we pleased mainly when we see Moroccans coming back to the country. And uh, you can go, you can really travel, you can learn, you can invest, you can make money. But you always have in you that spirit of one day that you will go back to Morocco. And and I think that link with your family and, and yeah. you know, we always have have somehow uh, a missing piece or a missing tile that we that we said that we, we have something yeah. missing. Even when, when we are uh, living abroad with with all the commodities and whatever we have, we always feel that. And I think that's what triggers you as well back to Morocco, uh, Simo, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I mean, you come back for family first. Yep. I mean, mainly family. Yep. Then uh, also get married. <laughs> so that's a, an extra reason. But uh, no, I mean, I I brought all this knowledge that I've learned in the, in the, in the internationally, I brought it back here. I brought the spirit, the vision, the mindset. Um, obviously, we're trying to navigate through, 
in the it's not the same environment but yeah. we're trying to change things honestly i mean i'm i'm trying to look at things the uh with a fresh uh new pair of eyes and uh we just we think that morocco is going places now i think uh you know with what's going on in the world and and uh, and with morocco actually going the extra mile in the world cup it's it's something that's, that's actually huge. quite interesting yeah that's huge i uh, mean congratulations for 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 the moroccan national team and yeah, everyone yeah for, there. for for whatever for, for for the result that they have done uh so when you came to morocco how did you start so your businesses give us some timelines we would like as well to 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 to, to understand your story then we can move more details into uh into your field honestly well. yep i changed it i i went upside down really i went sideways i started with uh i went from business real estate like really big business where we're doing in the US with some uh, some of my main investors. And then I was like, you know what? I just got to do it the Moroccan way. Let's open a cafe <laughs> or open a Completely. shop. And what I've done, honestly, is, is was at 360 degrees. I, w I opened an ice cream shop. It's Com called something like ice rolls or whatever. I brought a machine from China and I started making ice cream. It was funny. That's a, that's a big shift. I didn't know what to do, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, but I'm, I'm a doer. Right, I just got to keep on doing things. That's it. I, I can't stop. I can't stop. Uh, when you when you're an entrepreneur, you got to keep doing. That's it. You just keep doing. You don't you don't know where you're going, but you got to keep on doing, and you're gonna find something. So that was not a flop. I actually built my business, or I built for three months and sold it for profit. Fantastic. So this again, uh, it came with expertise and 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 experience, and you know from 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 previous experiences that I try not to lose, right? So when I spend my time and my money, I try and like at least leverage that, that, that opportunity. And I went again to some other opportunities in real estate locally, but I didn't know the market that much. So again, I went back to my, uh, my business uh, back and forth into Canada and US mainly. And this is where my, uh, this is where basically I, I, I kept doing business for a few years yep. until now. Yep. Okay. Uh, and you continued in, in in that path basically until today, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So, so mainly Lotus Capital it fall, falls in basically under under that field that, and that experience that you brought from US and Canada to, in, to to Morocco, yeah. In a way, in a way, but also open to new things. I'm I'm always developing new things. I'm always uh, reading, talking to people, seeing what's out there. Uh, what are the sectors uh, that are that are doing better? Uh, where, where's the money at? Yep. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so Simo, you, you moved from, from US and Canada and you brought with you that kind of a mindset and you know the entrepreneurship mindset in, in the North America is quite different and it's it's a complete change when you come to Morocco. When you came and I believe your mission was to develop your business and to concentrate on your business development. How did you manage that change between the operational and as well between the business development and dealing with all the local challenges and, and all the local requirements for the country. How was that experience? Well, based on my uh, experience, uh, when we started the business, uh, its first mission yep. was to launch a FinTech. So we were given the uh, uh, the opportunity to launch a FinTech in Europe, okay. which we did for the first year. I had a team of 10. So we had some great human capital, but uh, I've first experience in hiring people and managing people. So operations were kind of hard. Because you know you have to discuss vision, uh, show the way, and everything. But it was not my forte. Forte was more de biz dev, more business development, financing the operation, uh, raising capital for my investors. Because I learned with time that you never use your own. I mean, you use your own money, but you also bring in investors. Yep. It's it's a way to have less exposure to your own capital. But uh, it was kind of tough on the operation side. I'm gonna be honest with you. When you decided to invest in Morocco, um, I'm pretty sure, as you mentioned, you tried to bring some some investment funds and and as well, you know, to some some people that can actually join you along your venture. Sure. How was that experience? Was it difficult, to basically, to sell the Morocco uh, destination or the Morocco or a project in Morocco? How how did you do that approach? How did you manage to convince them? Uh, we would like to know your your ingredients and your secret, uh, oh, if it's possible. Secret. I don't think you will be talking about secrets, but let's see. <laughs> no, no, right uh, no, no, right It was now. a good try. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, was a yeah, good try. Yeah, how, yeah. Do you, how did you do that? I mean, obviously, based on my network, I'm not yep. gonna talk for the for the whole investment community, right? Sure. So obviously, a lot of people don't know about Morocco yep. or know only a few things about Morocco, right? That uh, they know Marrakesh and Tajin, yep. right? That's, that's, that's the first thing they, they, they talk about. Yep. 
but few people few people like are willing to venture into new countries uh, where I mean obviously you sell the stability of the country under the leadership of our king uh, in and all of that stability uh, being close to Spain being yep. you know the hub for Africa yep. all of that you know yep. we, we know the drill the thing is only few people know about the country and they're not I mean they're not all willing to invest their money because they see a lot of risk I think we, because Morocco can do more in terms of branding in yep. terms of selling the the uh the location selling Sorry. the the geography uh it, it is an opportunity we have a lot of leverage yep. Yep. if we can just assets use it as and well. assets yep. i mean morocco has assets just the location where we are geography being close to europe being in africa all of that we yep. we, we know the story yep. right it's just how it's been communicated to the, to the business community I mean, I think they're doing a great job at this more than b before. As we see, we were heard that the U.S. is the biggest investor more than the French. Absolutely. Which is a great thing. Honestly, I am much more, uh, I'm happier that the English speaking world is interested than the French. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not very you, you fun. You, you don't have to say that. We, we are, I don't like the French model. We, we, we are in the Morocco English radio as well. So that's a big proof great. that we are changing. That's, that's why I'm here. I love the initiative that you're having, because I think it's a great output that somebody has to go out there and talk about Morocco the right way, yep. the international way. Uh, yep. CNN and, yep. and Fox yep. are US-based, but what does Morocco have for the international community? Absolutely. That's one, it's good that you mentioned this point. You give me the, you're giving me the opportunity basically to talk to our listeners about what Morocco English Radio is about. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what is it about. I'm, I'm, today we're bringing you Simo Andalusi as, as, as one of actually Moroccans that they are coming back to the country. Uh, Despite all the challenges that we have into the country, we still love this country and we will overcome all those challenges. Of and course. we have a lot of assets that we should focus on. But at the same time, there are many efforts being done by all the elements or all the ecosystem. I mean, we have the Minister of Tourism trying their best, bringing actually tourists to the country, doing a lot of English campaign, doing campaigns in different countries in different languages to highlight actually what Morocco is about in terms of opportunities for tourism. Yeah. Stability, etc. We talk about the Ministry of uh, of, uh, of of Commerce and Industry, mm -hmm. um, Morocco. Now uh, I, we keep talking about it because it's 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 a very interesting name. Uh, we, when we mentioned it, it's Morocco is now. I keep saying it all the time. It's not tomorrow. It's not the day after. It's right now. It's you know we talk about coming and investing in Morocco today, and that's what that's what Morocco now is about. And and we can see the impact of that. Uh, we're becoming now one of the biggest exporters of cars. Um, our notoriety into the market is increasing and it's becoming more and more easier to sell the destination and without a good and a proper communication channel. And I believe, beside what we do here in Morocco English Radio, that's actually a national cause for us, uh, Simo. It's, mm. We wake up in the morning thinking that this is what we should do. Yeah. I want someone to be sitting in Singapore and actually going through the radios and trying to understand what, what Morocco is about and searching and finding two Moroccans, you and me, today, talking about what Morocco is about, talking about that capital and that asset. And this is what we, that, that's what we are about. That's, that's, yeah. that's actually yeah. our vision and mission. Yeah, yeah, you need to be the major league of communication. Yep. I mean, there's, there's amateur yep. communication, which we see, we see a lot of yep. right now, yep. but there's also major league. You need to be in the major league. People don't have no more time to 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 to, to listen to wishy washy type of platforms. They need to hear and see things yep. like they hear on the yep. their own platform. So I think we need to we need to raise the bar. Absolutely. We need to raise the bar in the way we can. I mean, one content, one content can be explained and discussed and branded or communicated in multiple ways. 100%. And you don't need one channel. You need multi channel. Hundred percent. You need to be aggressive. 100%. Because people, it's psychology. Yep. The more you talk about something, the more, more you tackle it, yep. the more you, it's like hitting the nail on the head. Absolutely. Boom, 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 until boom, boom. Until it's done. Until it's done. Yep. If you just hit the nail once a year or twice a year, well, it's going to get you 10 years until you you just plug it in on that board, right? Absolutely. So I think, I think uh, we need to be a little bit more aggressive. We have a momentum and we have to serve that wave. Yep. Right now. We have another point as well to add, if you allow me, Simo, to at this point, is Morocco is a country. And when we speak about Morocco, it's not just a country. Morocco is a brand. And a brand with all the elements and all the benefit that it has and all the key selling points that you have into that specific brand, you need to communicate on it. You need 
to create a good communication channel about that brand. And that cannot be done unless we are aggressive all the way and unless we we, 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 we toggle down and we benchmark as well because, you know, today, I mean, we don't need to go anywhere else. So there are there are actually some success stories and some success models. Of course. You look at, for example, Singapore. They came from nothing and, and, yeah. and, and look at them today. They are one of the biggest international markets in terms of investment. And uh, Morocco, with all the asset that we have, we have a lot of things to highlight. And I think everyone should contribute to that. You are doing the same today with Bean and Sean. We really thank you very much for that. And we are trying as well Fair. our best to do that. Yeah, thank no, you. No, 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 definitely. I'm with you all the way. So from ice cream, you move to what exactly afterwards? Wow. <laughs> what you, should a big change, remember me. you should not remember me with ice cream. Look, I will keep remembering <laughs> you that. I, I believe you <laughs> needed that at a certain time. You you, you had to did. do something, yeah? Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, what was, yeah, I mean, I pride myself on these experiences. You know what I mean? I mean the best learning opportunities, yeah. Always, yep. and I love failing. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's it's a roller coaster. It's up and down, and sometimes you lose. You doubt yourself. Yeah. What am I doing here? What did I come back? I was good over there. Uh, you you're worth. Look, I'm not. I'm not Mr. Ice Cream, and I'm doing ice cream right now. Uh, the vision changes. What am I gonna do in the next year or so? Do I have to come back? So this is the question in time. And I think a lot of expats, when they come back to to the country, they that's the, the, the death valley. That's what happens. So this is either you stay or you go back. I know a lot of a lot of people that got that that went bust, belly up, spending a lot of money, yeah. uh, paying salaries, launching a business, and then the business never picked up, and then they went back. Yeah. And the, but they, they they wish you could stay, but at the end of the day, you gotta make you gotta put food on the table. Right, and we believe that you know, in Mukjeb, we believe in destiny, and whatever your your opportunity is, you just go where the opportunity is. Morocco sometimes can be an opportunity, but also has a pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. And those cons can be can be bad when you have a family, kids. Don't you believe that in Morocco we still have good investment opportunities? Because when you look at, for example, U.S. and and Canada, and you try to think about a new idea or launching something new within the country, mm-hmm. you know the, the market is quite saturated. You know, I mean the here. The, the, or I there. mean, I'm talking over there, basically. Mm-hmm. Basically, so don't you think that Morocco is still quite virgin in many fields where we can actually launch if we are good and we can succeed? Of course, Morocco is a, it's a virgin area. It's a virgin virgin market. There's so much we can do down here because when I look at Morocco, I look at Morocco and Africa. Morocco is just not a country; it's a hub. You look up Morocco and 50 plus countries because with the free free trade agreement, you get access to 2 billion people through Morocco. Absolutely. So think about a company coming down here. Yep. Just let's go hypothetical. You go to Morocco, you open an office in Casablanca, but your main operations and focus is, you can basically be in Morocco and do business in Burkina Faso. Absolutely. Or Guinea. Absolutely. Or Senegal, which is a very close country. All of these are open through Morocco. So it is... Uh, I look at it as a as a as an area, not just a country. Absolutely. So Morocco has a lot of opportunities only if everybody can work towards the same vision, you know, and be l- much more entrepreneurial. Which is starting, by the way, digitization, open companies in a, in a day or two. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, paperwork, all of that. It's I, it. It's a, it's a lot of efforts has been actually done there. You know, we. Uh, we can recall, we cannot actually miss this opportunity to recall what His Majesty King Mohammed VI oh, uh, definitely. When advised yeah. on simplifying uh, all the procedures, uh, not only for investors, but as well for citizens in general. Yeah. You know, it's citizens' rights, it's the constitution. Anyone uh, is allowed to get his needs and his documents or whatever needs done in a certain time without any delay. And we start feeling that, as you mentioned. Uh, we, we, we can actually mention, for example, today, uh, Morocco now, we, we just talked about it few, in a few minutes ago, but we can mention as well the uh, the central or, or the regional center of investments that today they are a one-stop shop for opening companies for, uh, for anybody. Yeah, from, yeah. Uh, what I think as well, from a personal perspective, we're probably missing like a small piece, which could be uh, uh, a, a department mainly for coaching and, and, and to listen more to... Uh, to basically foreigners like you that came to Morocco, because if I'm Moroccan, living in Morocco, I'm 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 dealing with those challenges on a daily basis, and I'm a kind of uh, have that uh, humility, and 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 I know how to deal with those challenges. But if I'm coming from abroad, 
with an American vision, when everything is done online, where I don't have to deal with any challenges in terms of documents. And I come here, I'm actually facing that challenge. And and, mm -hmm. and that can be my, my, my down, uh, not moving forward. And I believe that we probably should think about those people uh, not to lead them to that failure and packing their luggages and moving back to the country mm -hmm. is to listen to them more and see how we can help them to overcome some of the local challenges. And I believe it's done now with many entities, but we should do a lot of efforts in that area. Definitely. And I mean, coaching, coaching people is, is also uh, uh, a very important part. Uh, I think... I mean, again, let's keep it very. Uh, let's keep it very honest here. Okay, no, I'm not. That's, what, that's I'm not, what we are about. We're I'm not, not going to I'm not politically correct, but I'm saying that we're too much academic, uh, and and we're not. Uh, I mean, I believe in IQ, EQ. So you, the emotion quotient, uh, the, the 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 EQ part is is really teaching people how to deal with people because you you don't deal with companies. You, people deal with people. I can be company B and you company A. It's just one person talking to the other. It's just emotion. And I think mindset, yep. training people on on how to negotiate, on how to sell. Selling is very important. Whether you sell a product, you sell yourself. Yep. I mean, even when you go to a job. Yep. Interview. You gotta sell yourself, right? Absolutely. So you gotta learn sales. Yep. Sales is the number one thing. And I don't think we teach people how not to be entrepreneur. And I think some people want to be an entrepreneur. So I think there's gotta be an opening somewhere. A link. Yeah. A link somewhere where yep. people can say, you know what? Yep. I want to be an entrepreneur. What do I do? What do I start? Okay, you need X, Y, Z. So it needs to be like a, a process for someone. Okay, you gotta get coach. You gotta learn this. You got like you learn the language. Absolutely. You can learn Mandarin. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can, if you want to learn Mandarin, which is very complicated, but you can learn it, right? Human beings absorb fast. It's just the process, the environment gotta change. I think more entrepreneurs create more jobs, more businesses that open, right? I I think I don't know. I don't have the accurate number, but I think there has been in 2020, 2022, uh, no, 2022 or 2022, 2021. Yep. You had like I don't know, hundred thousand companies being open so that just trials yep. 100,000 people trying to be entrepreneurs yep absolutely first year you'll have maybe 50,000 that, 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 that go away which is normal which Every, is okay which is it's a ratio everywhere. It's, it's a ratio it's everywhere and from the, the 50,000 maybe you have 20% that stay yep. and from the 20% five years yep. maybe 2% or 5% I, I don't have the accurate numbers what yep. I'm saying is that it gets diluted all the way yep but we should we should maximize that number of of, of success versus the failure. But so that that's does, what you're but to that say. tells you a lot of people right now want to be entrepreneur. They don't want to get stuck in a nine to five job, which yeah. means a lot of people want to make money. Absolutely. How do I make money? Do I sell? What do I sell? Yeah. To who? So they have to, to teach them the, the the basics of sales. You sell on the product. Microsoft sells software. Absolutely. I don't care how many people will work there, but they sell software. They sell in something. How do I sell this to who? Okay, Morocco close to Africa. Let's show Moroccans how to sell to Africans. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's the, the closest country right now, you get two billion people that are willing to buy a certain product. And you got Moroccans, they have the product, but they don't know how to sell. They're just one example. Sh teach Moroccan how to create opportunities just to sell to Africans. Forget Europe for now, it's saturated. Sell to Africans. Absolutely. Th doesn't mean they're, they, but the food, clothes, I don't care, services. parts, yep. services, yep. IT. Yep. But consolidate all of that. Put a platform. Teach these people. Teach them how to make a cold call. Yeah. I started with cold calls. I would call anybody and, and, and get through any door to any meeting. I would deal with billionaires in New York. Yep. yep. Attitude. Yep. Mindset. Your attitude is your altitude. Yep. Mindset is everything. It's all in the brain. You got 10 centi centimeters, you either make it or break it down here. Just right between your eyes. That's what I believe in. B based on you, how to become an entrepreneur? Wow. I mean, again, again, everybody has a certain answer, but based on my experience, again, 17 years, 17, that's, a, that's, that's a whole my life. But I never had a job, by the way. I never worked for a first salary. I never had a job. I don't have, I never had a pay stab. Hit, hit the ground running all the time. But you know how stressful it is, man? Yeah. It's crazy. You have to live off trying to sell something to someone, and this is how you pay my rent back then. You go from failure to failure, doubting yourself every day. There's 365 days and there's no weekends in entrepreneurship. Absolutely. No weekends. Absolutely. So Monday is Sunday and people are partying, but you're not. 
because you're taking on Monday, and you know what? You're the 25th, and you still don't have the the, the rent money, and you gotta sell something. You because you 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 you're based on on sales. You're selling something. I don't care what business you do. You're selling something to someone, Absolutely. and people have to pay you against that service. Absolutely. So it's stressful, but you know what? It's the best feeling in the world, because when you get to any type of place, any level, it you, you're grateful. And you get gratitude, and then you go like we say, "Alhamdulillah." You grow more grateful. You grow more. You go to a next, and then you, and you feel get like more confidence. Yeah, but you believe in whatever I put in my mind, I can do. That's a mindset. A lot of people don't believe in themselves. One failure. People say they fail before they start. Absolutely. Who am I? Why me? Ah, I'm not that good. Again, it's parents. Maybe it's the environment. It's school. School teach you how to be a taxpayer. Yeah. You go get a job and. Pay your taxes and that's it. Be a happy citizen. Pay your, go get a loan, get a car, marry, get kids, which is okay. But a lot of people want more. They just don't know how Absolutely. to get more. So entrepreneurship, I think, starts with mindset and changing what's in, in your head first and then teaching you how to do things. It's It starts within you. Yep. There's a lot of, that's why you see a lot of coaches right now. It's 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 all over the place. People are being personal coach, business coach. And these people are like, you not even business owners because they see there's an opportunity. People, I just want to be motivated. There's nothing motivating. Like we see Morocco right now saying, oh, I'm Moroccan. Like three years old, four year old saying, oh, oh I love Morocco. See, this is great. We yeah. should, we, sh- we should, I think it we should, encourage that. we should yeah. take the national team right now yeah. and make them campaign the whole world, the whole, the whole country. The whole country yeah. You go to yeah. villages yeah. and you go to, uh, to schools and teach them, hey guys, if we, you, you, if you want something. it, you can do it. You know what? Yeah. That, nobody tells them. Yep, yep. Nobody tells them. Yep. You have a dad that says, "Wow, you gotta go get grades. You yep. gotta have the, the high school degree." Uh, the yep. I always heard yep. that you, if you don't have a high school degree, you don't have a passport. Yep. What does that mean? That, yep. that you're not that good. You, you're not gonna be. You're not gonna amount to anything in your life. In your life, yeah. Yep. If you don't have that degree, really, really. Let's look at all the billionaires and people who made it around the world. Ninety-nine point ninety-nine don't have no school degree. They just have mindset. They just have mindset. That's the real degree. Absolutely. Which means you have a degree within you, you just know how to unlock it. And then you gotta go and pay a coach yep. to say, oh, you're good, you're yep. good enough, Absol- go out there. Absolutely. So I, I believe more in a mindset than, than anything else. Uh, my, my question again, I will, I will always take you, uh, Simo, to, to where you came from. Well, you came from Morocco, you went to US and Canada, then you came back. Um, again, based on your experience, when you look at the, the, the two components, because when we talk about entrepreneurs, we talk about, the the mindset of the entrepreneur himself. Then we talk as well about the ecosystem that actually encouraged the entrepreneurship. And mm-hmm. here I will go to the very important component, which is the money injected into those businesses. And we probably can talk about the private equities, you know, or or the companies or the investment funds, or uh, I mean, all the, the the landers or all the companies that will be interested. One of them is the banking system as well. You know, that's 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 one of the elements. Do you believe? that the mindset that we have in Morocco is different from the mindset that we have in US and Canada. And I will explain myself more. I believe, that's my personal thing, and probably I'm wrong and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that we we talk more business plan in Morocco than vision, which is the other way around. Because if you go, for example, and you pitch for uh, for an idea or a business in front of actually uh, investment angels, they will probably ask you some financial things, but how do we we'll judge you in U.S. versus how they judge you here? And you are actually into this field at the moment. What's the difference based on your experience? Well, um, it's true that, I mean, let's not even talk about banks. Because banks don't, don't fund ideas, right? Yep. You know that. But banks, there's no liquidity. Banks only give you money if you give them their life. Absolutely. You, you got to give them what you own. And if it's enough, then they give you money. So let's just discard banks and yep. let's talk about angels. Again, that's not my, again, I am not the expert sure. 100%. I'll sure. talk about what I've went through yep. and what I've seen. Yep. What I've seen, well, obviously, I, l- I raised $2 million myself for, for this fintech and I exited, I built it, I sold my position in a fintech uh, in, in Portugal, which I'm not allowed to, to talk about right now because it's not launched officially. Okay. But I... I see that uh, internationally, people do invest in ca- human capital and they invest in the management teams. And you can have the best Excel sheet in the world. 
your Excel sheet is only as good as you want it to be. Plan, yeah. No, it's only as good as you want it to be. Absolutely. You could play with numbers, you could give assumptions and oh year three, I will just pick up the business, I will break even year four and profit by year five, blah, yep. blah, blah. Yep. And then it's great. At the end of the day, people are gonna be like, Okay, well, how much did you put yourself in your own business? Oh, nothing. So you get no skin in the game. So that's that's what people want to see outside. Yeah. They'll be like, you know what? Go that's what we call friends and family money. So you go get like a hundred thousand dollars or fifty thousand, whatever from people that trust. Just to the show models. that yep. you believe in your idea, because they want to see. Okay, this guy really believes in the idea. We're gonna now fund you for whatever ninety five percent or yep. whatever. Yep. And I don't think in Morocco, honestly, what I see, you see all these programs on TV and everything lately, like they want to do the Shark Tank type. Yep. They give like ten thousand dollars. What are you gonna do with this idea? With this money? Seriously? Yep. Nothing. Yep. Yep. So it's mom some mom. They, all of these businesses are gonna stay in mom and pop shops, yep. right? Small businesses. I think in my uh, in my uh, you know. It's your personal point of view. It's my I'm personal saying, point. Yeah. I mean, we, that's we it. Respect, yeah. So uh, th- you won't build a big business out of it, but it, it will be a great start if somebody doesn't ha- don't have money. So it's a it's also a good thing. Yep. But it's a it's a big it's a big it's it's night and day when yep. you talk about yep. international and Morocco. I think these people have to come, the international markets have to come down here, and they have to be accompanied. Uh, 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 like we have to take them by the hand like a baby yep. teach them they know how to they know how to fund businesses what you need to do though is to bring them down here to Morocco and teach them the mentality the culture how we do things at the end of the day they will find a way to, fu- to, to find data there's no data in Morocco yep. and Africa there is a little bit of data but there's not real data yep. they cannot know who, who their target market is their TAMs they call it the TAM target you know yep. but I think there was an opportunity for these people to come down here Yep. Because they have the liquidity. They know how to deploy it. I don't know. The, the investor has like $100 million. He can come down here, but he will come with his team and, and, and invest in Moroccan businesses. And I think they do it. They invest in v, local VCs. They yep. invest in local PEs in Morocco and Africa. So I think it's being done already. Yeah. But in uh, different levels, like, I believe. It's, I think it's done more, yeah. as, as you mentioned, as, Less a VC, as a VC level, which is a venture capital level. Yeah, yeah, because there's yep. local VCs in, yep. in, in Africa or Morocco or whatever, yep. and then you know they raise institutional money and then they can deploy it within a certain policy yep. in certain markets with criteria and everything. But I think there's less exposure, less appetite to risk, I think. Absolutely. Uh, based uh, Or compared to, to Europe or compared to, to the US. That's my point of view. Okay. But I think it will increase with time uh, as the country, or not the country, but I look at the continent, most forward continent, and you could see business sectors opening. Uh, I think because they're coming in. The Amazons are coming down here. The big players are coming down here. They're doing their own due diligence. They know the markets. They have their own advisors. They're not relying on local authorities. They're not relying on local uh, information, and information. Data, et cetera, yeah. They go get the information. Yep. They collect the information. They do their own due diligence, yep. Yep. and based on that, they can deploy or not deploy the capital. Yeah, it's a go or no go, basically. We you know, we call it go or a no go in the market. Yeah, but it's happening because everybody knows Africa. I mean, this is a this is go, this goes without saying. Everybody knows Africa is the next big thing. Yep. How you tackle Africa? I don't know. They know, but I think there's a lot of things to do here, man. There's a yep. lot of things. Yep. Yeah, do you know? The, the, I'm pretty sure you're quite familiar with the with the ranking of doing business in Africa, and uh, and we've seen Morocco actually ranking uh, and going actually top top of the rank within within Africa, you yes. know, with, uh, with with Egypt and and, and South Africa, uh, and it's very noticeable because those are the countries that they actually highest the GDPs, have highest GDPs, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I believe that the sectors that Start creating that big brand and PR about Morocco, like the automotive, for example, mm-hmm. uh, became a kind of a driver for 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 investment and driver of interest mainly because I th- I believe that's the that that's where I think are moving forward. I will go back to one point that you mentioned is um, you you talked earlier about the Shark Tank version of Morocco. Um, I watched that myself many in many versions and. Uh, we can we can really discuss and we can really um, keep talking around uh, what's the outcomes or what's the return on investment from that. When you compare it, you look at the investment, for example, in US. You look at we're talking about millions and millions of dollars. People coming, for example, sharing. I mean, selling one percent stake of a company for five hundred thousand dollars. So we look at a completely different evaluation of companies compared to the, yeah, the market evaluation. Yeah. 
but I believe from my point of view that it's a very positive note because when you look at, for example, someone who's coming there and his idea is quite accepted by people that they are successful in the country of because they are entrepreneurs of in the country and they dealt with the local challenges. Of course. That's, that's, that's something quite interesting. And I believe that efforts should be more done to bring back the funding close to that. What does it take to be an entrepreneur or, or, or a successful entrepreneur? Success Simon? in or general. Or success. Again. What's what's success for you? What, what, wow. what is success? How do you define success? You know, some people some people think success is just having a great family, it just living a good life. You know what I mean? Everybody can define success their own way. But if we talk about entrepreneurship and business, I mean business, it's a shark world where people, you know, it's not straight arrow. It's yep. not as straight as we yep. think. Yep. But I have a story for this. I have a quick story because I think uh, we get thought a lot of things, especially like school. Like they teach you, but I like stories. We relate to stories. So there's this guy that wants to, um, I've been told a story like 10, 15 years ago. And I told it in front of an audience in Canada and it resonated. So this guy goes, I want to I want to be successful. And, and his friend's like, listen, if you want to be successful, there's a guru, an old man in a village, right? You go to him, he's going to make you successful. He's going to magic. A, ma- a magic thing. The guy was like, really? Like, yeah, 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 you gotta go see him. And the, the the next morning, the guy just dress up, you know, dress up for success, you know, dress for success type of thing, calls in a suit and everything, and goes to see the, the old man. See the old man, like, I've been I've been told you can make me a, 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 like a, a success. The guy looks at him like, okay, come tomorrow, 8 a.m. The guy comes in sharp, well dressed again, ready, ready for the day. The guy says, "Follow me." He's like, I, "What do I follow you?" Like, I thought it was a magic. Like, he thought it was a magic pill. Where are we going? He show you the, you know, this is the easy yeah. way in. Yeah. And then he follows him. Keeps walking in the forest for about an hour. The guy's like, "Hey, come on, what, what are we going, old man? I thought I'm here to be successful." The guy said, "Just shut up and follow me." He keeps walking until late. They get to a lake. And then guess no 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 this is the guy goes this is crazy man like we're going to a lake and a forest and a two hour walk what is this and he goes into like and for the last time the guru tells him if you want to be successful you shut up and follow me and then you will be successful and then he takes him by the hand go into the water the water gets to the neck level right and then the guy's like okay and he takes his head so the guru takes the man's head put it under water for about a minute. So what happened after a minute? You suffocate. You, you just, you know, you're, 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 yeah. you had, you panic. you panic and, and you yeah. want to get out. And the guy pushes out, you know, takes his, his head out of the water and looks at him. And the guy's like, catching his breath and everything. And the guru asks him, what was the only thing you were thinking about when you were underwater? Only thing. Were you thinking about going, to, uh, going partying? Were you thinking about going to sports, playing, doing this? Doing the guy's like, no. What was the only thing? The guy was like breathing. It was like, this is it. The day you're going to think about succeeding the same way you were thinking about breathing, you, you will, will succeed. You will succeed in life. Meaning, if, if you're not obsessed with success, with success, you forget will about it. You, will, you know why? Because you're going to be so knocked in the head, so ha- so bad, yep. that you will never get up. Yep. Your, be- mot- your motivation you're be crazy. should be higher. You're going to be crazy. Your motivation should be way higher from, from, from disappointment. You're yep. going to be crazy. Yep. People think sometimes I'm crazy. I work all the time. I, I love what I do. It's challenges. It's ups and downs, yep. but it's okay. It's part of the journey. Absolutely. So I think this is, for me, a great story that tells what it takes to be a successful I person. I thank you for that. It's an amazing story. Thank you very much, Simo. <laughs> no, no. My... I believe it's my last question, last but not the least. Uh, sure. What are what are your plans for the next coming years, Simo, professionally, personally, if you don't mind sharing as well? Uh, my personal plans right now, uh, based on 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 what I do and what I've done and what I try and what I try to avoid in the next few years, is quality time. Uh, I'm 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 awaiting a little baby. Congratulations! Uh, thank you. Yeah. And and it's changed my perspective of life. And I think life is about. I mean, it's great. I mean, we all want to make money. I mean, we go to school, we get degrees, and, 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 and because, you know, you pay your bills and you do your things, you travel, you need money. I get it. But it's a, it's, it's a means. Yeah. It's, it's a choice. You buy choices. So for me, quality of life comes first now. So I think being financially free, that means doing what you want, when you want, travel when you want, when you want, and be with whoever you want at any time. 
It, it's a ter- it's a Thursday morning, nine o'clock. You want to go to Prague with your family, come back. That's called financial freedom. It's not being calling it rich or whatever. It's financially free. So yep. being quality of life, which I was working like a dog for years. Now right now I'm 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 tweaking my ways of doing things. Yep. My businesses in a way where I'm having more time for myself and my family, but I love working. I just work smart now. I work I worked smart, but I think I was working smart, but I want to work smarter right now. That's very that's, good. That's that's my that's my next step. Work work life balance, yeah. The best you work need life ba- balance. You yeah. need balance because we live only once and and I want to see my my children grow. And 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 you know so and and spend time with family. So I think this this I think this is the best you can you can you can achieve in life. Well, Simo, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you for coming today to Mark English Radio, and definitely wish you all the success with your next coming plans with and your you work life and balance. Yeah. And I wish all the best to Morocco English and to you, Jalal. I think what you're doing is great. It is great outlet. I it's my first uh, uh, opportunity doing a radio show. I try to talk t- uh, to you in a very open-hearted way, but I think what you're doing is great, and I see this as a as a growing uh, campaign for all of Morocco, in and out. So congratulations to you guys. Thank you very much, Mohamed. Thank you very much. It's really, uh, for your kind words, they're really, really touching us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening. This was Good Morning Morocco with Mr. Simo Al-Andalusi, the CEO of Lotus Capital. We'll be back after the music break.